Steven Seagal doesn't know how to fight. The level of his training in martial arts is clearly visible to the naked eye when filmmakers don't try to hide it with super fast editing and when it's really him on the screen. Not a stunt double, which is rare. In his movies, Steven Seagal often uses a set of three or four identical moves from a self-defense instruction manual for pregnant women and he uses these moves only against helpless henchmen who are only good at tumbling without hurting themselves. The action hero has zero acting abilities. Here he finds out that his daughter has been kidnapped. Okay? His friend is killed in this scene. Just witness the emotions of a devastated man who has suffered the loss of someone close to him. Damn it, man. Uh, I try not to act. I think uh, the most important thing in acting is to not act. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Nevertheless, despite all of this, some still believe that Seagal is legit. Anyway, in this video we will take a look behind the scenes of the movie Belly of the Beast. The movie was so bad and absurd that I ended up making one of the funniest recaps of Steven Seagal's flicks. The fingers you have used to dial are too fat. We will find out the various things people say about the lead star of the film to generate buzz and attract viewers in hopes to appeal to anyone other than Space Eyes, Red Eye Reviews and myself, Alex Lanz. Happy to be here. Working with Steven's been really amazing. It's been a really good experience. Once you get to know him, he really is a, a really nice... I mean, he's pretty intimidating because he's so tall. And you're always thinking, hey, he could just, in one second, just say, I don't like the way he said that, bang. But, uh, no, it's been, it's been good fun. Steven Seagal traveled to Thailand in 2002 to showcase his guitar playing skills and portray himself as a spiritually gifted Buddhist. And also to contend for the Nobel Peace Prize through his massive donations for the benefits of Thai children. We raised two million baht. That says it all. This is about 58 thousand dollars, Steven. Charity is a good thing, but you might want to tone down the grandiosity a bit. For a person whose net worth was estimated at 45 to 60 million dollars at that time, such a donation is not exactly something to be that proud of, while puffing off his belly in front of the cameras. It's just like giving a five dollar donation for a person who makes five thousand dollars a month. It's nice, I would be happy to receive such a donation, but that's not something to brag about. And it also is not your donation, it's something you and your team have collected Collected in this Vanity Fair named after Steven Seagal. I spoke with Ed Karaba last night. We want to try to do this every year in Thailand to raise money for the children. But his spiritual superiority was limited to just talking and wishing, as he did return to Thailand a year later, but not for charitable purposes. No, he returned to Thailand to film a stunning masterpiece of cinema. Belly of the Beast is uh, in the beginning apparently about terrorism, but in fact not about terrorism. Yeah, it is more focused on a lazy, horny tourist who looks like Homer Simpson in pajama and penguin hat and only moves from the chair to the the fridge. So it's really about deception. About deception? Well, that's the main ingredient of your life. Deception seeps into everything you do. And every single one of your movies has plenty of that. Here, of course, the lie has been taken to a new level when you haven't even watched the movie yet, but you're already deceived by a DVD cover with a flying car and poorly photoshopped hands on the head. An honest cover would look something like this. What's the movie about in a nutshell, besides the deception? It's about one greedy businessman that tries to pretend like there is terrorism so that he can really crush his business competitors. Are we talking about the same movie? It's a political thriller. Did someone snatch a script from this motherfucker? It's a movie that I've just sort of created solely for the purpose of shooting in Thailand. Whoa, 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 let's put aside for a moment the question of where the irresistible desire of making a movie in Thailand came from. Did you create this film? Uh, Pele of the Beast is production of Steven Seagal. I see this guy named Tony Tim in director's chair. The screenplay was written by James Townsend. Steven Seagal is listed as one of the many producers of the film. Yeah, also there is a note that he was an uncredited writer, but we all know what it means when it comes to Steven Seagal. He probably tweaked dialogues to avoid appearing as anything less than Buddha himself. Perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps he made a significant contribution by including the story of this sorcerer and his voodoo doll, although it could have been
been screenwriters initiative to give someone a chance to resist the best that at least in some way. It didn't help much though, and Steven was able to resist the magic quite well, despite of not being able to defeat it. And anyway, the whole crowd of Buddhist monks immediately rallied behind him. I'll also question the authorship of this girl, whose chest Steven is reading in such is as if it was a Burger King menu or a caviar plate. This is a but one thing we don't have to doubt, that a great filmmaker had a hand in his favorite scene. What was that, Steven? Favorite scene? I think the scene that I'm about to shoot right now is probably the most touching scene in the movie. Touching a poor girl doesn't make a scene touching. He's been teaching me a little moves here and there, you know? Ok, at least he knows that the action takes place in Thailand, that's already good enough. I've wanted to shoot in Thailand for 15-20 years. It's a movie Can that... you please avoid lying for no apparent reason? It's not a lie, if you believe it. 15-20 years? Really? Did you already have a desire to make a movie in a hot and agriculturally oriented country without McDonald's? In 1983, while living in Japan and not even consider an acting career, you know, I hadn't really uh, considered, you know, acting as, you know, something that I could really. Okay, I guess. And where did this desire come from? I'm proud to be able to show a lot of great Buddhism and a love for Buddhism, and some great monks in Thailand and great Prajan in the movie. That's my honor. And what happened in the mid 90s when you had the opportunity to make your own movie? Why did you choose to pretend to be a spiritual Eskimo instead of fulfilling your 20 year dream? When you're doing a lot of fighting in this kind of heat, it's very devastating. It's rough. Very hard. Oh. Alright, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Back those days there were no way to blow cold air through a hippo sized corrugate hose to cool down a star of this scale. But what kind of a lot of fighting are you referring to? In the movie this guy does everything instead of you. He even goes to the chair instead of you. Just to let you know, in the belly of the beast Steven Seagal doesn't even want to sit anymore. He steadily strives to take horizontal position. That was most challenging for me was the fighting. We must have a big fighting scene with uh, Steven Seagal. The fighting scenes were with this guy. Steven only stooped to appearing on camera for close-ups and captivated the audience with those delightful movements. Or for those pirouettes when he simply stands. Well, the extras do everything they can to make their falls look as spectacular as it is possible, while making sure that Big Daddy with his clumsiness doesn't break their wrists. He's, he's very good at what he, he does, and uh, he's, he's very generous as well. I find with uh, you know he was make, making sure I was alright, so you know it was it was fun. It was easy to work with. Is this sarcasm? Out of all the footages they made from the film shoot, they could only find such a shot to prove Steven being nice to people around. It's easy to work with, which was quite, uh, you know, I was quite relieved, really. He isn't making sure he is all right. He's trying to convince the film crew that he is all right. He is all right. Yeah. Yeah, he is fine. He doesn't even look at him. Personally, I think that Steven Seagal annoyed everyone on film set so much that they decided heavy troll him in the movie. That's where those scenes came from. Scenes where he cannot resist the fridges. Maybe the title of the movie was actually brainstormed during the process of working with the martial arts star. It is also possible that the mastermind behind all of this is none other than director Tony Teen. The thing is that at some point the brilliant star decided that he knew more about staging fighting scenes than a stunt coordinator with an impressive track record and their reputation as a professional in this field. Working with Tony, I have to be there all the time, total concentration, because Tony demands that of you, especially with the fighting and things. He expects me to do it straight away. Steven was desperately pushing for his vision on an action movie where he would only recline on soft cushions, touch women and make grand gestures with a smart look on his face. And at some point Tony Chin just declared, Screw you guys, I'm going home. He began packing up his stunt team to leave, but luckily the real producers, not a chubby pajama wearing slacker, real producers, worked tirelessly to persuade him to stay and finish the job. It seems to me that it was at that moment when the scene, which I called Sliding Penguin, was born.
I just can't imagine how something like this could be done seriously. Okay, last time I talked about making of the movie's exit wounds with behind the scenes stories about Steven Seagal, a unique person of modern times. You can watch it or just check out playlist with the Steven Seagal movies recaps. The recaps are awesome, well, movies are terrible. Till the next time. Cheers.